from Wuhan to the world. COVID-19 has gone global, killing tens of thousands and terrifying millions. Meanwhile, another virus has emerged. The symptoms? Suppression, misinformation and panic. If China was an open, transparent, democratic nation, then this whole thing might not have happened. 101 East investigates the fight for truth in a time of contagion. has a lot of time to think these days. He's a resident of Wuhan, the Chinese city at the center of the COVID-19 outbreak. Quarantined in a school dormitory, he's unable to interact with anyone around him. When he speaks to us, it's via social media, his only contact with the outside world. During the cold winter month of last December, Zhang was working as a kitchen hand. Like the rest of Wuhan, he had no idea that a deadly virus had invaded his city. The market closure was the first clue that something was amiss. Not that Wuhan's residents were officially told anything. But doctors at Wuhan's central hospital started to share their concerns about a virus similar to the deadly SARS, or Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome. One of them was Dr. Li Wanliang. There are seven confirmed cases of SARS at Huanan Seafood Market. They are being isolated in our hospital's emergency department in Houhu Hospital District. Be careful, our chat group might be shut down. The latest news is it's been confirmed that there are coronavirus infections, but the exact virus is still being identified. Don't circulate the information outside of this group. Tell your family and loved ones to take caution. The authorities were not happy. On January the 3rd, Li was summoned to Wuhan's Public Security Bureau and forced to confess to making false statements. But by then, it was too late. Dr. Wan Liang's warning had begun to spread, just like the virus. <laughs> As the month progressed, so did the number of cases. Then, on the 20th of January, the government finally confirmed what many suspected. People were spreading the disease. The news couldn't have come at a worse time. China was preparing to mark the Lunar New Year holiday, its biggest festival of the year. Just three days later, Wuhan, a city of 11 million people, was locked down. It was a dramatic move. So you think Wuhan should have been shut down sooner? 
性的，比如说你们去可以导致的，在无知的情况下去采买粮货而发生的感染。我感觉我们应对危机的能力。Even Wuhan's mayor Zhao Jingwang admitted that the news about the virus should have been released earlier, but he says his hands were tied. 我只获得这个信息以后。But for Zhang's family, it was already too late. His mother was feeling tired. She had a fever and was coughing. The doctors advised Zhang to quarantine his family. Desperate to protect his loved ones, Zhang had to improvise, turning his small van into a makeshift isolation zone for his mother. In Wuhan's freezing winter, it was not an easy decision. His mother eventually recovered, but then his father fell ill and Zhang was taken into quarantine by the local authorities. In another part of the city, Zhu Luping is also in quarantine. Since her father was diagnosed with COVID-19, she's been isolated at home with her mother. Zhu has regular checkups with doctors via an online system. We check the patient's room. There is a camera in the room. 呃，他就是他的数据，联网实时会传，就是我们这边检查了以后，然后实时会传到社区的那个医生那里。Zhu is grateful for the free healthcare and quarantine facilities the government's providing, but she believes her father got sick because the media was slow to report the disease's infectious nature. 当时的舆论导向就是，呃，舆论导向就是这个病毒就不是很严重。Even such mild criticism is rare in today's China, where the government has always controlled the message, and state media provides positive spin, like at this Wuhan quarantine center. I'm very excited. Let them all chill for a little bit. Watching all this unfold is a journalist from Wuhan. He spoke to us on the condition that we hide his identity for fear of reprisal. We'll call him Zhang Minliang. The coverage has to be positive. Anything that is demoralizing is not allowed to be reported. In regards to the topics we can't touch, basically, there are a lot of them. Every day we receive updates on what topics we can't report on. There are also restrictions from the local authorities. Basically, it's hard to interview the doctors and government servants. Jiang first heard about the virus from friends who are doctors. 
One of them told me the situation in his hospital is very grave. He was complaining to me because some doctors were wearing protective suits and N95 face masks to protect themselves from the infection. But the hospital did not allow it, saying they were creating panic and causing the patients to be afraid. Zhang says he realized what was happening in his home city was a symptom of a much bigger problem. In the past few years, we can see that the media in China has been withering. If it was 10 years ago, they had a strong ability to organize, report and plan. The media had the power to do something good. As time goes by, you realize that if the media had done more investigation and research, the epidemic wouldn't be so serious now. But the government has been pushing a different message, like this report quoting the Wuhan Party Committee Secretary. Lu Xin is a senior presenter on CGTN, Chinese state television's international network. Of course, some media have called China's efforts draconian, heavy-handed, autocratic, but we call them effective. In a candid interview with 101 East, she concedes Chinese media has made mistakes in its coverage of the virus. If the media can do a, must do a better job, they should learn the lesson. Because at the end of the day, it's ordinary people's lives that were harmed, that were at stake. But the top leaders in China will not be held to account, would they? I don't know. If they did something wrong, I mean, the, 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 general, the general public are watching all the time. The thing is not to bring down the system, but to bring it, but to make it better. So, because we are all in it. Everybody is at stake. President Xi Jinping made very clear that the priority of China's media was to reflect the thinking of the Communist Party. We cannot pitch the Chinese Communist Party against the Chinese people or vice versa. It doesn't work like this in China. I see my job is to work for the overall benefits of the Chinese population. From the start, the government's position has been clear to stop and smear those who challenge the official version of events. People like Fang Bin, a middle-aged clothes retailer in Wuhan. He decided to investigate and film what state TV wasn't showing. Fang toured the city, visiting different hospitals, showing the chaotic reality for overworked doctors and nurses and the desperation of patients and their families trying to get treatment any way, anywhere. And the pain of losing loved ones. Fang Bin was shaken by what he saw. Strict online censorship ensured that Fung's social media account was quickly deleted. Uh, 然后出来以后呢，我就还留个心眼，我就把那个窗子门窗打开一看，哎呦好，六七个个家伙都是防护服穿好了的，是吧？结果我跟他走，是吧？就说这个要去给我这个叫什么，就是我这个去危险地方了
。哎，方哥，测体温，测体温，现在体温什么的，我体温没问题啊。你们是哪里？你说清楚哪里的？你们哪里的？你开下门，你开下门。不，你这样，你拿个生长证来。我不废话，你去拿个生长证来。你别过。His last video on February the 8th was just 12 seconds long. It featured a scroll of paper with the words He hasn't been seen since. Fang Bin wasn't the only one trying to reveal what was going on. Lawyer Chen Chu Shi arrived in Wuhan on the last train before the city was shut down. Chen shone a light on the government's quarantine measures. Uh,这个方舱医院的形态明显是很像那种战地医院，或者说是，但是这并不适合传染病人居住。but while Chen turned his camera on Wuhan, attention was also turning to him. 我的名字已经彻底成为敏感词，只要带“陈旧石”三个字带 C Q S， 带我这张脸，在微信上都传播不了。已经有很多人跟我说，我在武汉的视频只要通过微信传播，连号都被封掉，因为最近在中国微信上的谣言确实很多。我是害怕，我前面是病毒，我后边是中国的法律和行政力量。Then he too. Disappeared. No one's heard from him since. In a tragic development, the original whistleblower, Dr. Li Wanliang, contracted the virus and died. Chinese social media erupted with anger and sorrow, prompting worldwide grief. This is a very painful situation. 公民说真话日，这样一个来彰显我国宪法、公民有言论自由权利这一项，是一个公民最基本的权利。Hundreds of academics and everyday citizens signed a petition calling for a national day of free speech. Among the signatories was Beijing lawyer Lin Qi Lei, who recorded this message for us. 这样的公民呼吁，因为体制的原因，可能没有收到任何答复。那么，在中国，呃，做这样的联署啊，也有可能坐牢。但是，这个我都有心理准备。我认为，我这样做，虽然有很多的。A thousand kilometers from Wuhan, Hong Kong has been closely watching what's happening on the mainland. Rarely has Hong Kong seemed so quiet and placid. Easy to forget this same city has recently been the setting for often violent protests calling for more democratic reform. Those protests have led to a growing anti-mainland sentiment, and this virus is deepening that sentiment. The fact is, if you think about it, if China was an open, transparent, democratic nation, then this whole thing might not happen in the first place. In 2003, Hong Kong was hit by the coronavirus SARS, which also originated on the mainland and killed nearly 800 people worldwide. Back then, Dr. Alfred Wong was still in medical school. Today, he's a frontline medic, treating patients infected with COVID-19. We split the department into what we call the dirty team and clean team. What does that mean, the dirty team? 
we are dirty. We are, we are responsible for taking care of the patients who have this virus or are suspected to have this virus. The idea is to contain the risk within a small part of the department to avoid catastrophe. He says he first heard about COVID-19 in December. So when we start hearing about signs of this disease uh, being out of control, um, the number of patients are climbing and people are dying and apparently the authorities in mainland China are trying to cover things up, um, then we are very much worried. Alfred's been living in a hotel close to the hospital. He can't risk going home. Because I'm not only trying to protect my patients, but also trying to protect my family. I have a wife who is pregnant, so the last thing I want is to give her the virus. Yeah, so I don't go home, but, but we see each other uh, every now and then, like uh, once a week or something. So we still have dinner uh, together, sometimes uh, in a park or, 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 or at a bench. Do you sit apart from each other? Yeah, we stay away from each other, three to four meters. So that, that must be so hard not to reach out and, and, and touch your hand. Yeah, it is hard, it is hard, but... Uh, For Alfred, it's a small price to pay compared to the pressures the doctors face on the mainland. These people who have been trying their very best to speak of the truth and gave their lives doing it, um, I mean, they are heroes. They're heroes. They will not be forgotten. Very similarly, I don't think the people of China will forget the crime that has been committed. Crimes. The crime. You call it a crime. It is a crime. You don't think so? I mean, I mean, to to tell all these lies and and suppress all these whistleblowers, arresting them and then cause all these thousands of deaths. It says that the map demonstrates the staggering reach of the new coronavirus based on flight data, and it's completely wrong. It's completely wrong. Professor Masato Kajimoto is trying to contain another virus that's been spreading and mutating. Misinformation. There is a lot of anti-China misinformation going on right now in relation to this um, coronavirus. He heads a fact-checking team at Hong Kong University. Since the outbreak of COVID-19, they've been trying to work out what's fake and what's real. Did you find yourself shouting at the computer screen sometimes when you see this? All, all the time, all the time, <laughs> yeah. Don't report this, it's not true. You know, why did you say that? Well, you know, what evidence do you have? He says the online rumors and lies about the virus are compounding the panic and fear. It's a real ecosystem. If you map how information spreads on the internet, you could actually see the organism, how organically it spreads, how it mutates. And the danger of spreading false information is that it can cost lives. There are lots of medical information, obviously. Drinking warm water will kill coronavirus, uh, uh, roasted garlic will prevent you from getting the virus. There are all sorts of uh, misinformation going on right now. This chart is a comparison between flu, common cold, and COVID-19. So for example, runny nose is a symptom of flu and common cold, but not COVID-19. So the claim is that if you have runny nose, don't worry, you don't have the virus. Um, that's not scientifically true at all. So we debunked that. And the problem is that kind of content is often picked up by traditional media outlets. Masato says spreading misinformation is not only easy, but lucrative. There are lots of financial incentives for what we call bad actors. Basically, they want to have a sensational content that people click all the time, because that brings in ad revenues for them. So they churn out six, seven hundred stories a day. So it's really hard to win this fight. Graphic, you know, where the video...
Masato plays me a video purportedly showing family members who died from the virus in Wuhan. Video seems to be authentic. Um, we sort of blur the faces because yes. it's actually that person. Um, so this happened in December, but it had nothing to do with coronavirus. In fact, his team established the family died from carbon monoxide poisoning. But by then, the video had been viewed more than 100,000 times online before it was finally taken down. If you live in a country where press freedom is limited, if the information is controlled or censored, people don't know what to trust. As every country around the world struggles to respond to the pandemic, China claims it's winning the war on COVID-19. Now it's offering expertise on how to defeat the virus. But one important lesson comes not from China's successes, but from its failure. That trust and truth are powerful allies in the fight against this invisible enemy.